Hello everyone and welcome back to the coverage of the finals of the Magnus Invitational. We are at game 4 and Nakamura needs a win uh, to get back into the match. He already did it once in game 2, now can he do it once again in game 4? Uh, with the white pieces, uh, no less. So again, we have d4 from Hikaru and knight to f6. And again, we're gonna go uh, into the queen's gambit decline. c4, e6, knight f3, and d5. The queen's gambit decline is on the board. And knight to c3. So let's see who, who's gonna switch it up, uh, or are both of them uh, satisfied with, with the games they've already played. We have c6 by Magnus going for the semi-slav. Bishop to g5 and now knight b to d7. Uh, we have e3 and now queen to a5. Magnus goes for the Cambridge Springs variation, which uh, I, I think it's been quite a while since we've seen it on this channel, especially in, in top tier tournaments. Uh, but okay, knight to d2, uh, not allowing this knight to be pinned, also preventing uh, the, this knight from jumping to e4. Sorry about that. Uh, and uh, we have d captures on c4. The main move here is uh, bishop to b4. However, uh, Magnus goes for d captures on c4 instead, which uh, has been played quite a lot in 2020. Uh, and uh, Nakamura goes for the uh, for the uh, obvious choice, as now you've opened up the attack towards the bishop by capturing on c4. So bishop captures on f6, knight captures, and only now do you recapture on c4. We have knight captures on c4. Uh, you could also capture with the bishop, uh, but the bishop uh, will be developed e2, and the knight from c4 attacks the queen while also prevents this bishop from being developed to d6, which is kind of useful uh, in hindering black's development. So queen back to c7, and now bishop to e2, uh, Nakamura prepares the castle with bishop to e7 and a3 now, taking away the b4 square from black's pieces, also preparing b4. We have castles by Magnus and now b4 as planned. We have rook to d8 now, it makes sense as the queen is still on d1, so white might have to worry about ideas like e5, which could free the, the light square bishop. Uh, and uh, just castles here. Uh, and uh, there is one game where bishop to d7 was played, uh, but here we have b6 by Magnus and it is as of move uh, uh, 13 that we have a completely new game. Uh, so Nakamura continues with bishop to f3, grabs hold of this diagonal, prevents Carlsen from executing c5. Uh, so bishop to a6 first, attacks the knight here, we have queen to b3, defending while also connecting rooks, and now rook a to c8. The rook is now uh, not on, on the a8 square anymore, and you are now ready to push c5. We have rook a to c1, uh, now just developing the rook, also the queen is on c7, so it, it does make sense, and Magnus just pushes c5, as uh, Hikaru allowed it. So d captures on c5, and here bishop captures on c4 first, Magnus wants to trade as many pieces as possible, queen captures and b captures on c5 now. Uh, and uh, while well, you could continue just capturing here, first knight the a4 by Hikaru. And knight to d7, adding another defender to the c5 pawn. Uh, and here Hikaru is uh, very happy with his position, obviously. Problem is Magnus only needs a draw to win the match. So if you go for something like queen a6, uh, put pressure on the pawn here, uh, just uh, a nice active move. Now black is unable to capture due to this, then queen to b8 is very strong. And again, if, if you capture, then black is very happy just ca trading everything. Captures, captures, captures. And we have this uh, uh, position where both players have an A pawn, but black has it nicely defended and uh, no problems for black. So Hikaru needs a move that keeps the game alive. He tries queen to b5 instead. And the Magnus now uh, needs, uh, needs to find a move that basically neutralizes all of Hikaru's threats. Now queen to e5 is one such move that uh, that does so but magnus instead goes for queen to b8 and he says uh, i'm not worried about anything here now uh, let's just trade queens and i will be very happy to hold this end game and hikaru says all right but uh but by doing so i will also grab a pawn so queen captures on b8 we have rook captures on b8 and now just b captures on c5 so not knight captures on c5 allowing more trades hikaru keeps more pieces on the board but uh, this also means that he keeps the knight on the edge of the board but but he does have an extra pawn, so let's see what, what can the passed c pawn do. Rook d to c8 for Magnus, and now c6, uh, Hikaru starts pushing his passed pawn. We have knight to e5, now with a double attack on the pawn here, uh, and just rook to c3 by Hikaru, preparing rook f to c1 to double up on the c file. Magnus grabs on f3 with check, we have g captures, and now king to f8. Magnus starts bringing the king into the game which uh, uh, says that, he, uh, and he also says to Hikaru, you cannot bring your knight into the game because I'll, I'm just gonna trade and I'm very happy with my position. 
Uh, also, uh, you can to do something like knight c5 and rook captures on c6 because you have this check which would win the rook. Uh, but Magnus, of course, uh, would just capture and then start bringing his king into the game and he would be very happy. You can double up here and maybe maybe even win the pawn back. So no problems for Magnus. So Hikaru instead goes rook to d1, uh, now cutting off the, the black king, uh, and also preparing a, a beautiful trick. Carlsen goes king to e8 and we have rook to d7 by Hikaru. Trying to trick Magnus into going rook captures uh, here to, to kind of trade rooks, but here Hikaru had rook captures on e7 prepared, which basically leaves him uh, up a whole knight. So Magnus, of course, spots the trick. He plays bishop to f6, gets the bishop out of harm's way with tempo as the rook is under attack. So rook to c5, and only now does Magnus grab the pawn. We have rook captures, rook captures on a7 now by Hikaru and rook captures on c5. We have knight captures on c5, and now we have this position where Hikaru is still up a pawn, but it's a passed a pawn, which could prove uh, prove to be uh, a bit difficult to defend. So Magnus goes bishop back to e7, uh, puts pressure on the knight, and knight to e4 now, and f5 now. We have knight back to g3 and g6. Now Magnus has to start improving the position of the king, and keep an eye on that a3 passed pawn. So a4, Hikaru starts pushing it, and king to f7 now. Uh, and here we have knight to e2, trying to bring the knight into the game the other way around. King to f6 and now rook to a6. Now it's a question whether you just start pushing the pawn or do you uh, cr try to create some threats. Hikaru goes rook to a6 first, going for knight to d4 to put pressure on the e6 pawn. So rook to b2 by Magnus and now knight to f4. Magnus even allows this. Uh, sorry, not knight to d4, knight to f4. Uh, and here just king to f7, not allowing this pawn to fall with check. Magnus is basically inviting uh, inviting this capture uh, because if uh, knight captures here, then you get bishop to h4 and you go after the f2 pawn, then the e3 pawn, then, uh, well, uh, you, you're going to grab a lot of pawns and you will be very happy. So Nakamura ignores this e6 pawn. He goes for knight to d3, attacks Carlsen's rook, uh, and now rook to a2. Carlsen just puts a rook behind the pass pawn. We have rook to a7. Uh, and the king to f6, not allowing the bishop to be pinned, and now f4, which is very strong as it prevents the, the king from moving, uh, so you might, uh, uh, you, you know, it, it could be very dangerous, for example, if the bishop moves, you can see that the rook is controlling the entire 7th rank, and, you know, if with the pawns controlling this, if the knight gets all the way, let's say, to e8, it could be checkmate, but that's a lot of moves. So bishop to d6 by Magnus, and now rook to a6, going after the bishop, king e7, and now knight to e5. And now this knight is an extremely strong piece here. Uh, if uh, if you don't eliminate it, it's just going to be there forever. You're not going to be able to, to move a lot, uh, your pieces a lot. So Magnus says, uh, I am very happy to hold uh, this rook and pawn endgame being a pawn down. So bishop captures, we have f captures, and king d7. And now Hikaru needs to find... Uh, how to create uh, how to create threats here and how to start the pushing this pawn up the board. Uh, so here you uh, go king to g2. If you try something like a rook to a7 check to go after the h7 pawn, just king c6 and after rook captures here, you're going to capture this pawn and you will be very, very happy holding this. If you go after rook here, king d5, you're going to grab this pawn and this is all, uh, all very fine for Magnus. So king g2, Hikaru not interested in parting with his uh, pawn here. Uh, g5 by Magnus. Uh, we have rook to d6 check and king back to e7. Hikaru goes back, rook to a6, and Magnus says, I am very happy with a draw here as I win the match if we draw the game. So a5, Hikaru starts pushing the pawn and the Magnus starts pushing on the king side. We have h5. Uh, rook back to d6 with check and we have a repetition. King e7, but now a6. So Hikaru got this pawn to a6, but now the question is, how do you get it uh, further up the board? because Magnus is not uh, moving his rook uh, from behind the passed pawn. So we have h4 here by Magnus, and now rook to, uh, rook to b6, uh, just uh, uh, trying to create some, some threats here. Rook to b7 check, followed by a7 is an idea. So king to d7, and now rook back to d6 check. Now if you go for this check, then just king to c6, and you cannot push the pawn since uh, the, the rook hangs. So rook back to d6 with check king to e7. And now the problem is Hikaru is already down to 1 minute and some 20 seconds. Whereas Carlsen has uh, oh, oh, I think around 2.5 minutes. So uh, Hikaru really burning a lot of time trying to figure out how to go about this. We have h3. 
Uh, and now just rook to a5 by Magnus also puts pressure on the pawn here. Of course, you're, uh, you're not interested in capturing that. Uh, so f4 by Hikaru and now g4 by Magnus. And now if you capture here, then you just give black two connected pass pawns. You don't want to do that. So rook back to b6, but now rook to a2 with check. Uh, we have king to h1 and now rook to a1 with check. We have king to g2, rook to a2 with check. Uh, and here, king to f1 by Hikaru. Uh, Magnus repeats, rook to a1 with check, king g2, and now rook to a2 with check. And it was in this position that uh, the, the players agreed to a draw, as there is no way it, uh, to make further progress. If Hikaru gets greedy and tries to go somewhere like this, then the h-pawn will just queen. Uh, so you don't really have an option. You have to repeat moves and uh, just uh, continue getting out of checks. So yeah, uh, by drawing this game, Magnus wins the, the, the match, and by this he wins the Magnus Carlsen Invitational Tournament. Uh, and before we forget, here are the final standings after uh, the tournament uh, ended. So Magnus Carlsen wins first place and also the prize of $70,000, followed by Hikaru in second with $45,000, then Ding Liren in third uh, and Fabiano in fourth. Uh, sharing $30,000, I thought it would be, it, it'd be a bigger prize for third and fourth, but since... Uh, uh, it was a knockout and they both uh, we were eliminated in the semifinals. It does make sense that it's equal. Then in fifth, Jan Nepomnishi with 22 and a half. Then Alireza Firuja with 20. Anish Giri with 17 and a half. And Maxim Vashel Lagrav in eighth place with $15,000. So that, uh, that uh, sums up to total prize fund of $250,000. Which uh, still makes it the big, biggest ever online chess event uh, in chess history of the world. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, the game. I do hope uh, you enjoyed it and that you've enjoyed my short coverage of this event. Uh, probably probably going to return to, to the Paul Morphy saga. We're going to check up on Lila Chess Zero and, uh, well, pretty much everything else that's happening in the chess world. We have the Nations Cup coming up, uh, so we're going to check that out as well. Uh, but I might take a day, day or two off to, to you know, uh, relax a bit now after this event has finished. Uh, but yeah, and this is the third time Magnus defeats uh, uh, Hikaru Nakamura in the in the online uh, online finals of some uh, first thing he he beat him in 2016 Speed Chess Championship, then I believe in 2018 Speed Chess Championship, and now in 2020 the the Magnus Invitational. So tough break for Hikaru, but the, there is always a next time. Uh, so yeah, once again, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Niels Wild, Carl Nielsen, Blair Barnes, uh, Bryce Foster, and uh, Donald Kinsey for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing uh, whatever uh, I feel like continuing, most likely. Uh, but yeah, uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your Sunday.